Hello and welcome back to the Chatham Exchange. Uh, I'm your host this evening because OJ's away. And joining me this evening, we have Ian and Johnny. Thanks for having us, Alex. Hi, Hi. guys. Nice to see you. Um, <laughs> now, for those that haven't seen our video from last week, uh, we'll be going through uh, the polls that we've been running on our Twitter page for the last month. We've actually got a video coming out next week that's the same, and we'll look at day three of the Chatham Festival. And then we've got another video coming out the following week, which will be day four. So um, if you've not seen day one's video yet, have a look back on our channel. That's on there. Um, and yeah, today we're going to look at day two of the of the tips that we've, we've received. Now, one thing I'd like to say is thank you to Lloyd from Hacked Up Racing for all your support. <laughs> and uh, if you'd like to get some discount on his website, you can use the code EXCHANGE25. Is that the right code, Ian? That's correct. Excellent. EXCHANGE25. One other thing, please make sure you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, post any naps that you've got for the festival, particularly for the second day. Post them in the comments as well. And uh, you never know, we may get to have a look at them next week. So without further ado, let's move on to the first race of the Wednesday, which is, of course, the Ballymore Novices Hurdle. As you can see the poll we've run on here, uh, Hermes Allen, Goodland and Gaelic Warrior were the three that were the top of the betting when we ran the poll. And then also that we put in other than there, just in case anybody fancied those. Johnny, I'll come to you first. Uh, before we look at the race for this year, just looking through those, the historic winners. So you've got Sigurhard in there, Bob Ollinger, Envoy Allen. Probably been, from, from memory, quite a good race for you. Yeah, um, it has been very kind. I think I've had four of the last five winners of this. Um, City Island was the one that I didn't pick, um, but I don't think many picked him, to be honest Honest yeah. with you. Uh, but yeah, my favourite was probably the Envoir Allen win um, a few years ago. Uh, just always remember him coming around that bend, a couple of lengths behind, and the camera sort of switched on the big screen, and then next minute he was sort of um, three lengths ahead, wasn't he? And it was just like he just... He ploughed on and, and won really well, like in the end. Um, obviously, going further back, we had Faheem winning mm -hmm. 2014. Class act, as we know. Um, but yeah, some be, been some good memories of this race. Funny you mentioned the, the Envoy Allen one. I was on the top of like a Ferris wheel at the course during that race. And one of the guys <laughs> I was with didn't like heights. And there was a lot of screaming. So I didn't actually see much of that race on the course. But <laughs> it was quite funny. Um <laughs> And Ian, uh, just having a look through, obviously, Hermes Allen, Goodland, Gaelic Warrior. Are you quite surprised that it's coming quite close between those three? Or did you expect one to be a lot further ahead? Um, if I'm totally honest, I'm fully expecting uh, Hermes Allen to have the, the bigger percentage. Um, I'm happy because I, I do like Gaelic Warrior for, for the Ballymore, so I'm, that, that's pleased me. But uh, I, I fully expected it to be uh, the other way around. Uh, obviously, Goodland put in a... A great performance in the Dublin Racing Festival, and a lot of people, I believe, uh, wanted Goodland to step up a trip to the Albert Bartlett, but um, still has a great chance uh, in this race. I just wonder if um, one of the others might have a bit too much toe for him, if he's a bit of a plod out himself. But now I'm, I'm personally very pleased Gaelic Warrior has been picked. And Johnny, you've obviously been very keen on Gaelic Warrior for a while. You put him up as one of your anti post tips, haven't you? Yeah, he's uh, he's been in the bag for quite a while now. Um, still fancy him. I still think he's got a great chance. Um, I know there's a bit of an issue with his the jumping right, but that only seems to be when he's out on his own. Really, I think if they can keep him on the rail, sort of penned in there nicely, uh, Mullins will have something else in there to to probably help that. You know, so uh, mm -hmm. I think he's got a good chance. But it's not a gimme. It's going to be a good race this one. And then just just looking through the comments. Uh... Well, f f friend of the channel, I guess, friend of us, Aaron Brown, probably would never admit it that he's a friend of mine, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, it says he really likes Dark Raven. He thinks two miles for him was a bit stiff before. Um, Simon Curry, uh, he says he's still choosing between the three Mullins ones. So you've got obviously Champ Keeley, Imperi Pass, and then also Gaelic Warrior. He says he's going to be doing the tricast on those ones. And, and Philip Daniel, uh, not the actor. Um, <laughs> He says it's an park impossible life. race at the moment. Sorry? I said park life. <laughs> yeah, park life. <laughs> uh, he says Sorry. he'd be tempted by Hermes Allen, but he thinks it's far too short. Uh, he's actually put up a, a selection. He thinks attacker might be good. Same only as his Altior, I seem to remember. Yeah. I'm thinking of the wrong horse. Am I thinking of the wrong I'm probably thinking of the wrong horse. 
But um, yeah, you might be right. It might be if it's the one that ran at Cheltenham. I think yeah, yeah, it was impressive. I don't know why I'm talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Ian just failing with the Henderson knowledge. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is first time you've ever seen it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that wraps up uh, day. So race one of day two. Moving swiftly on to the second race of the ch- uh, the Wednesday is the Brown Advisory Novices Chase. Uh, so quite a, a significant percentage here for Jerry Colom. So fifty three point three percent. Then probably a, a smaller percentage than I expected for the Real Wacker. A little bit more than for Sigurhard, and then twenty two percent there for other. So. I mean, it does look quite a, quite an open race. And Ian, I mean, there, there's been a few Henderson winners in there for you, I'm sure. Um, might bite. Um, oh. Although he had the one two that year, didn't he? Might bite and whisper. I thought uh, have Santini a attack, was okay. second in this race. Your favourite boat? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Might bite that year. Two thousand. I thought I was going to have a heart attack that day. Christ Almighty! Then I must have seen something in the crowd. Someone, somebody waving at him and, and went to go towards it. But oh my God! Um, just to pick, pick up like he did was pretty impressive, wasn't oh, it? I think he was, he was the loose horse, wasn't he? I think it's it, if you followed the loose horse and put him in the right direction. But um trying to figure, look at old Windermere. Yeah, black line, I think I've had in the past, presenting Percy. Yeah, it's been, um, and obviously the champ is the, the iconic one, isn't it? The, the recent one where he ran in. Between, yeah, looked like he was well being, didn't he? Look out for champ. But um, yeah, some. As soon, as soon as he'd finished there. jumping, he was like, oh, I'm fine now. I can <laughs> get running again. <laughs> um, and then in terms of comments, we've actually got a comment on here from Johnny. So Johnny, big time Hill fan. I was surprised that you put that one up, actually. Yeah, well, I, it's a tough race, this, isn't it? I think we're going to have a really good race, to be perfectly honest. And uh, I just I just think time Hill, he has got a bit of course form. And he's jumped all right this season. I know he's been crabbed in some corners, but I think he's actually jumped okay. Jerry Colom, you know, he's a rightful favourite, but I still don't think he's beaten an awful lot. Um, mm. And last time out, I just think he didn't beat anything at all, yet people were really, like, raving about that form, but I just couldn't see it. So, uh, yeah, he's not He's not really... I mean, I've got him covered, but he's not one for me, really. I think Ty Mail, maybe Sir G, if he does come here, would give him a... <laughs> Would give him a race as well so yeah i think it's a one not to get heavily stuck into and uh just enjoy it really and uh loyal, loyal watchers of the show will know that uh someone put him up anti-post when he was i think he was 25 or 30 to 1 something like that uh, i'm not sure who that was this man here <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh quite, quite like him too johnny um <laughs> in terms of other comments we had a comment from matt metro who doesn't understand the obsession with sir gerhard had one more in the season, jump shit, which he did jump shit. Uh, and then he's running it for uh, three miles for first time under rules at Cheltenham. Um, there's probably a lot to dislike there. But then, I mean, he's got some very good form at Cheltenham, hasn't he? He's, he's won the champion bumper. He's won, won the Ballymore last year. Um, maybe he's just a horse that, that loves Cheltenham. But, I mean, w- w- we'll see. And then a comment from Mick. Uh, he thinks Jerry's a worthy favourite. Does everything right. Jumps well throughout his race. He's a hardy horse. And he doesn't know when he's beat. He thinks the last two starts have been impressive and the step up and trip will do the world of good. So, yeah, a big, strong shout there from Mick for Jerry Colom. Any other comments from either you guys at all for the Brown Advisory? It's going to sound a bit silly, but during the Super Bowl last Sunday, we done, um, myself and my father-in-law and my friends, stood, we done a, a mini Cheltenham preview and we looked at this race. And I've got to be honest, I've totally missed the price on Jerry Cologne. But when we went through the runners, he's the one potentially I'm, I'm going to fall down on at the moment. So he's really, I know what John's saying about who he's beaten, but I think he's, in, he's impressed me with some of uh, some of his wins and runs uh, over the season so far. But um, yeah, he's, uh, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still not sure about the real whacker. Sir Gerhard is... I don't know. He's never been to this trip before. At three mile when he's day. I don't know. But um, yeah, that, that, that's my only comment in a minute. I potentially, Jerry might be the one for me. It's quite nice. I mean, personally, I mean, normally you end up having something in this race that's like four to six, like Evans' favourite, don't you? And mm. I mean, you've got a favourite that's pretty opposable if you wanted yeah. to. And then you've probably got a five or six horses that you could make a good case for behind that. And there's probably another couple behind that you could probably make a case for as well if you wanted to. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if something an outsider won this race. Yeah. Be no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that wraps up the Brown Advisory, or as Ian likes to call it, the Brown Pants Chase. <laughs> uh, next race, of course, is the Coral Cup. Now, there's, as you can see from the poll, there was quite a quite a significant vote percentage there for HMS Seahorse. Personally, I can't see it, but then again, I mean, looking down the winners of this race, I think the only one I've had in the last ten years is probably Dam de Compagna. So I'm probably the worst person to ask who, who's going to win this one. Uh, Johnny, I know you've had a few winners in this race, and you had heaven help us, didn't you? And then, yeah, uh, yeah for a few, might... few down the years. Yeah, my record, uh, it's not the best, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I mean, recently, obviously, heaven help us was a great winner because I was on that all the way through from like 33 to 1. Not, I mean, I'm not even sure where, what she went off on the day, but I remember backing her at 33s. Um, the other one I remember was 2016 Diamond King. Um, mm -hmm. I think Davy was riding that. I had that. That one. was that black and blue sort of checks, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, I think, I think. Yeah, was it? Um, yeah, I think it was like yeah, those colours, wasn't it? But yeah, I, I remember having that one. Um, I just I, I can't remember. I've had a few done close home in this race. I know I know that much, but uh, yeah, it's not not been my best race. I must admit, over the last say ten years or so. Commander uh, Fleet did be kicking the teeth. Uh, no, I know. Kicking the teeth. It's one that we've we've watched, it, especially with our friend Connor, um, who always liked Commander of Fleet. And I thought, oh, there's no no chance on this one. He was he fifty to one, or fifty something? to one, oh, wasn't he? Something like that. Oh, it's absolutely sick. No, you didn't have a pound on it, but uh, yeah, one of those things <laughs> <laughs> happens. Yeah. And then uh, just looking through the comments, had a comment from Dan Creighton who really likes Camprond. He's down nine pounds for two runs over two miles in the last few weeks. He's on a lower mark when he was forced in this last race, and he says he has to go close. I backed Campron last year, and as soon as the rain came, I thought that he's got no chance because he wants good ground, doesn't he? He wants like a, mm -hmm. a, a proper firmer, well, a firmer surface than than what he ended up with with it last year. Um, so yeah, I can see the logic with that one. And then another friend of the show, Jamie Wren, uh, really likes a horse. He's got keeping his eye on a horse called Irocco for Oliver Greenall. Are do you know much about Iraco? Can't say I do. If I'm honest, I can't say I do either. <laughs> <laughs> but Jamie, it must be a must be a good one if he's put it up. And mm. um, just looking back, some of the ones I've had done in this, so Wicklow Brave was the one I was trying to think of. Oh, got done by yeah. I could not believe how that didn't win this race, and and the year before that, I had top of the game done by Blueberry, um, and I also had Zabana done by that Alpati Swan. Swan, whatever it's called, my yeah. French sounding one that came from nowhere as well. So, yeah, looking at that, I have had quite a lot done sort of uh, close home in this race. Just had a look that Iroco's a uh, five year old horse with obviously, obviously Oliver Greenall, uh, McManus horse. He's had two wins at Weatherby this season, uh, both over sort of two and a half miles, both class three, for what I can see. Kept on strongly in both, so um, yeah. Potentially, could be one. Mm. Uh, I guess it would be a half decent price at this stage for those that are uh, attempted. Mm. Probably try and go in normal and back because you never know whether they'll get in. Um, only off a well, mark off a mark of one three eight, so probably should get into the get into the Coral Cup. You'd imagine, yeah, one to keep an eye on. Okay, so moving swiftly on to the fourth race, which is the Champion Chase, the highlight of the second day of the festival. Um. Looking through uh, the current vote, so Anugamin came up with the highest percent, highest vote share, so 53.6%. Then Edward Stone, 36.8%. Edward Jajit with about 7 And then a few people think something else is going to win. Um, not really convinced that anything else is going to win other than those <laughs> top three, to be honest. But <clears throat> you never know. Horses for courses. Um, Ian, looking through previous winners, couple of wins there for Altior. Oh, uh, yes. Sprinter Sacra in there as well. Another sprint to Sakura, Finian's Rainbow. Henderson loves this race, doesn't he? He does, he does. Um, the, the one that I'd say just looking on the screen that, that jumps out at me was Special Tiara. I think that oh. was the was that the year, was it the, there was rumors going around that Duvan wasn't at his best that day, and I think that the price collapsed on Duvan. I don't think yeah, he ran he any, any sort hit, of race it? at all, pulled up, or um, and he was like massive, massive odds for odds on favorite, but um. Yeah, yeah, Sprinter Sacra. I think the the last the last Sprinter Sacra. I don't think it was a 
a dry eye in the house, as they say. Mm. That, uh, it's quite an emotional one. But yeah, I've uh, I've had a, I've had a few in this year from Mr. Henderson. So he's lined my pockets with some money. <laughs> <laughs> then just going through some of the comments. Then uh, Andrew Shepherd loves Edward Stone. Uh, he feels like he's one of the best. Even though he's one of the best two mile chasers around, we know him at the Nurgreens level. He thinks Edward Stone's improving and he thinks his Clarence House chase effort was a lot better than he was giving credit for. Uh, UK Buck says the form of a Nurgreens champion chase is crap. Uh, Edward Stone's arc on is much stronger and he thinks Edward Stone wins. And then Phil Daniels on here again uh, and he thinks Nube Negra is going to win the champion chase. Um, personally, I can't see that. Um, I couldn't actually see any comments for why an Ergamine was going to win. Um, Johnny, I know you're probably more keen on an Ergamine than Edward Stone, aren't you? Edward Stone's one that you've always not been able to quite get right. Is that right? Not quite right, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, a couple of months ago, I thought an Ergamine was probably nailed on for this. But having seen the last race, then, like you said before, I think it's between the three of them now. I don't think he was given the greatest ride that day. I think he was held a bit too far up. Considering a lot of his races, he's gone from the front himself or at least been very handy. Um, so, yeah, I, don't, I think they'll learn from that. And I'm, I'm hoping he can turn the form around with the other two. But uh, it promises, again, it's gonna, you know it's obviously one of the best races of the week. You know, two mile chasers going at it hard. So, yeah, I look forward to this one to see what the outcome is. And how are you going to cope, Ian? No, no Henderson horse is likely to <laughs> run in this, are there? No. <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, no, I'd say it's... Last year, I was absolutely dead against um, Get the in <laughs> winning the Arkle. But I think I've had to, I think I'm potentially going to eat some humble pie because my, my wallet in my pocket really want Energamine to win. But if he had to pin me down in a minute, I think I think Edward Stone will take all the beating. I know Editor to Jeep won and, and led all the way. But I think, as, as Johnny said, Energamine, I think he gave. He was too far back. Even Edward Stone was too far back as well. well Edward Stone was, was behind the Nergamine, wasn't he? Yeah, so, so I think he was obviously watching the Nergamine. And, they were too um, busy worrying about each other and each other, let yeah. Edith Zeke get too far ahead, didn't they? So And those pesky white fences as well didn't help. Oh, I know. Yeah, either. terrible, aren't they? <laughs> but, so, uh, yeah. Obviously, no one's told Willie that he, he could paint a couple of his fences at home white, you know. Well, this is the thing. Apparently, he had. He's, apparently, he's been training at home <laughs> with white fences. has been fine. And then, and then su suddenly he comes to Cheltenham, and it's all because of the white fences. <laughs> That's a terrible run, and blames the white fences. But now it's uh, it should be a good race. But um, I, I would just edge Edward Stone at the moment. Same, I'm definitely in the Edward Stone camp. Big fan. Come on, the Edward. <laughs> right, moving on. Then fifth race of the Wednesday, we have the cross country chase, and we have an absolute decisive. Poll here, Delta work eighty eight percent, then seven percent Galvin, two percent of people are very wrong with Franco Deport, and then three percent with other. Uh, some very strong comments as well for Delta work. Katie Midwinter, friend of the show, been on the show as well. The Queen of Wales, as a, <laughs> as OJ likes to call her, she says that um, Delta work at a canter, Cheltenham time, which is a good Twitter account as well. Should follow, also follow Katie. Uh, but uh, Cheltenham Time has said um, most conclusive poll yet, higher than the Constitution Hills percentage in the Champion Hurdle, up the Delta work. So another confident one on there. And then an outsider there for KLR Racing for Back on the Lash, who um, has had good form in some cross country races before, but it tends to be more sort of the handicap ones. So yeah. off level weights, it's all to prove. Um, Johnny, I know uh, a few, few of your. Horses you've particularly liked over the years, and you used to like cause of causes, didn't you? Every year, yeah. Delta work obviously last year. I think you you backed him last year as well. Obviously, Tiger rolled us a few times. Good, it'd been a good race for you. Yeah, I mean, it's not like a huge betting race, isn't it? It's a bit more of a sort of a, a fun race. This one to watch. Um, obviously, like you mentioned, Tiger roll was that has dominated the race, hasn't he, for several years before getting just sort of picked last last season by Delta. Um, like you also mentioned, like your personal favourite cause of causes, who I mentioned last week in the National Hunt Chase, came back and won this. Uh, going further back, I also like the uh, good old Balthazar King. Um, oh, Balthazar King. What a horse he was. He won it twice, I think, didn't he? 2012 and 2013. Yeah, 2011, um, I think it was, was it? Or 20, 2012? 12, yeah, 12 and 14, I think. Oh, 12 and 14, okay. Yeah. 
but oh, yeah, he was, think. he was fantastic. Like he, everyone liked him. He was one of those horses that uh, mm -hmm. he was the original sort of tiger role, really. Wasn't yeah, he? he was. He was great. And then Everyone's he he ran fun. in the uh, uh, Grand National, didn't he? he fell and he did and yes, came back, yeah. but. Yeah, and then he did he come second or third in the Grand National? I think he got a I place. Think he, I think he, yeah, then one year he fell, didn't he? And he, he got yeah. a real bad like rib injury, and he, he did yeah. well to get him back on the track. I think so. Um, yeah, he, he was a great horse, but yeah, it should, again, it should be just a good race. But uh, you know, you can't look any further than what the poll said here. And he looks, he looks like the winner to me. Yeah, and Ian, you must really dislike this race because uh, <laughs> I can't see that Henderson's had a winner. Or a second in the last well 10 11 years what's going I've, on I've, I've never I've, apart from my bite i think recently which i think it was just a i don't know they didn't know what to do with him so they just chucked him in here but i've never really known him <laughs> mr henderson have any uh <laughs> runners in the cross country i think it's a, a rarity but mm. um i was just looking at at the last race at Dale to work not the not the one in uh in ireland which i thought was a bit of a, a funny run with uh rachel blackmore on but uh I think back on the I think Delta Work was giving back on the Lash a stone. I think it was. I think it was it 10, 10, five or ten three. I think back on the Lash was carrying. Yeah, it was a but, lot. Um, and it was quite close in the end. So you could you should see that Delta Work should, I don't know, should put these to the sword. I think personally, but uh, I agree. Should be a, an, an easy victory. Well, hopefully, unless Galvin does the does mm. what Delta Work did last year and turns over the other Gordon Elliott favourite. So. You never know, do you? No, that's true. That's true. Sometimes going over these cross country, well, fences and banks and stuff, they seem to sort of re, um, re energize horses. I mean, it did, it did it for Delta, it, didn't it? And yes, indeed. Yeah. You never know. Right. Moving swiftly on then from the cross country race to the Grand Annual, which uh, I think it's the first race we've seen so far where Other has won the vote. So mm -hmm. clearly it's a, a very open race. Um, second in the, the in the voting was Ockenresk, who has we, we've seen today is has suddenly come down with colic. So mm. uh, awesome. fingers Good. crossed, makes a full and swift recovery. Um, other horses in the in the in the voting were Curse of Lime and Fine Lauders, who I believe is actually going for the Arkle. But um, the the general idea for these polls is just to put stick in the top three in terms of betting odds, and then a. Uh, let, let everything else sort of work itself out. So, um, just looking through some of the comments. So, the racing boy I really likes Dad's Lad. Um, Dad's Lad actually was a selection from DJ Jeffries, who was on the channel a few weeks ago. Yes. He said that Dad's Lad could be a very good one for the Grand Annual. Um, Nathan Dawson, big fan of Andy Dufresne. Johnny, I think that's a horse that you're also quite keen on, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I backed him last year. He got absolutely smashed up in the betting, didn't he, and finished mm. second. Um, I think he's dropped a, a few pounds this year again, so he might be another. He might be up there to have another crack at it. So, yeah, he's one I'm really keeping my eye on. Not backed anything in the race yet, but he's one. Well, I did. I actually backed all mankind, but he's out, isn't he, by the sound for it. So, um, luckily, non-runner, no bet. But, yeah, Andy Dufresne's top of my sort of watch list at the moment for this. And then um, Ian, another another race where there's not been particularly many many winners <laughs> for Hendo. What's going no. on? Talk to me about it. Yeah, I said some of these older ones. I'm looking at. I can't even remember. Tanks for that and Kid Cassidy. I remember tanks um, for that. I'm just looking at some of here. So yeah, if you look, if you go past the last like ten years, I don't think Green Hope in 2006, Nikki. Green Hope. Yeah, he had oh. first and second in 2012 oh, as well. Yes, and Belvoir. No, I don't even remember. Oh, yeah. No. I, 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 I can't say I remember that, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, remember the Chosen Mate and Sky Pirate, but see, Global Citizen, I think, was... I don't think many people had that. I don't year, think Willie's had a winner in this at all, has he? No. no I mean, his, his record in um, handicap chases at China is pretty poor, isn't it, Willie? But... Yeah, very poor. Yeah. And funny enough, I did look at Dad's lad. I think he has form in tidy with editor to Jeep, funny enough, and um and obviously a win at Cheltenham as well. But I say yes, a couple of people have said and Johnny just said that I say he's forming this race and the handicaps is he's not very good, so that puts me off slightly. But yeah, I don't even I can't even see him having anything in the first three actually over the last few years either. No. It's uh, very, very bizarre, that, really, because you'd mm. think that they would fall out of 
you know, during the season, something would be falling down the handicap and it would come in here well handicapped. But in, unless he tries to save them for, for the Punchestown, because there's quite a few handicap chases at the Punchestown Festival, aren't there? So, yeah, um, yeah never know. So. He's got a bit, he's got um, to get a winner eventually, hasn't he? I suppose. And then uh, Ash likes Amarillo Sky. Um, last seen when he was fourth in that race at Cheltenham with um, Editor Gigi Energamine and um, Edward Stone. <laughs> yes, <laughs> forgot well, already. O- only yeah. beaten nine lengths, but um, I mean, his official rating is 155. So, I mean, it might be tough because he'd, he'd be probably near, near enough top weight, wouldn't he, on 155 in the grand annual? Oh, yes, definitely. Hmm. You'd imagine. But yeah, it looks like quite an open race. Nothing's really come out and been smashed up in the betting yet but i'm sure over the next couple of weeks some something will gain some traction at a couple of these preview mm. nights and you'll probably, probably no find tuesday. in a couple of weeks something's like a three or four to one favorite so the entries come out tuesday i believe for the for the handicaps and in the weights of the following week so we, i would say we'll probably have more of an idea next week i think especially with uh this race and the handicaps and as you say there's bound to be one or two that We'll get bombarded and shot oh, yeah. in the straight away. But uh, there'll be some clip of pro- probably Ruby Walsh on a podcast or Gordon Elliott on a podcast <laughs> or something that will just go around Twitter and everybody will say, Oh, look at me. I'm really shrewd. I've backed this horse as well. And <laughs> next thing you know, it's three to one. And yeah, happens every year, doesn't it? Yes. So there was one, one year when that was it, Squatter or something was, was, yeah, everybody was told, Oh, he's the best handicap horse in training. He's got 30 pounds in hand. He was dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's dear. a technical term as well. <laughs> right, moving on then to the final race of the Wednesday, which is the Champion Bumper. I, I don't know about you guys, but I love this race. I love the Champion oh, Bumper. And uh, I mean, just looking through previous winners, I mean, it's obviously been a very, very good, very good sort of trial, I guess, for for horses going forward. I mean, obviously got Gerhard in there, Fernie Hollow, who. If he hadn't obviously kept getting injured, he could have been a half winner, champion um, chase winner. Yeah, I think he'd, he'd yeah, he would have. Uh, Envoy Allen, um, Fiona, if she hadn't had that horrible injury. Mm. Um, yeah, some good horses in there. And uh, I think obviously over the last couple of years, Johnny, been quite a good race for you, I guess, because you've had a few yeah. of these. Yeah, the last four have uh, all sort of got on the anti post early doors. So yeah, I've done really well. I, I suspect my favourite was probably the Fernie one. Um, Mm. because you know, during the season, he was written off, wasn't he? He had a couple of seconds, then he came back and he won a bumper. And he was a bit of a um, he was a bit of a he was a bit of one of these horses that he looked a bit of a a character and um, Mm. they couldn't seem to get the tactics right on him. Then he he ended up winning winning the race, didn't he? And uh, me and Matty were on that like all the way through, and we kept faith with him all season while others had sort of written him off. But yeah, that was one of my favorites. I think the other, I think my first anti post winner in this came in. 2010 which was cue card um Ooh. and i didn't really do anti-post betting there but i'd heard something somewhere on, on the radio i think it was and and backed it and yeah and, and he won like so that was that was good but uh yeah it's been i like the race alex a lot of people don't like mm. it but i do i think it's a really good race to, to watch like you know last run off the bridle normally wins and Ian, uh, uh, how about you? A few good winners in this race going back, back down the years? I'm just looking through here. I think I must have had nearly every winner, apart from Relegate, I think, since 2015. Yeah, so it's been, it's been quite kind to me. He's a moon race and Bally Andy. But yeah, I think Relegate, I think everybody, I'm, I'm probably me, wrong, carefully selected in 2018. I think Relegate oh. was a, a big... I think Katie Walsh retired that year as well, after not long after that. But um, yeah, I think she was... 33 to 1, I know it was quite a big price. It's probably one of the biggest prices in the last, I don't know, five or ten years at a bumper, but um, she was a cutie yeah. pie. I think we were all on Carefully Selected, and the year before we were all on Debouche as well, and he was second, wasn't he? So, oh, good, yeah, yeah. Remember him, yeah, I mean, I, you know, he was a, he was a Max Mullins horse, wasn't he? But, yeah, mm. I was on him as well, but he got beat by Feyenoord, so... Yeah. And J- Johnny, you commented on this, you're quite big on uh, Chapeau de Soleil. Another one of Richie's. Yeah, well, um, again, it's it reminded me a little bit of the the Fernie Hollow season, where he seems to be like the forgotten horse. You know, he's had the, he's only had the one run rather than the two, um, um, with a second. And you know, there's there's talk about him going for another one before 
before March. It'll have to be very soon, though. Um, I wouldn't like him to go straight there. I'd like to see him again over these next this next week or two. Uh, but yeah, I, I've got to keep the faith for him. Obviously, I've put him up in one of the anti-post videos. So uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully he rocks up on the day. So and and I hopefully. believe that's who Scotty has has mentioned. He says he's keeping the faith with Sunshine Hat. That's what Chapo de Soleil translates to. So I I assume oh. that's who he's talking about. However. This could be a very unknown horse, possibly actually called Sunshine Hat. <laughs> but I, I'm assuming he means Chapeau de Soleil. So that's what I think. Me, I've got to say, I think the bloody old Sunshine Hat. <laughs> sunshine uh, Hat. <laughs> well, Soleil is definitely Sun, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, uh, other selections today. in here. Racing Matt really likes Encanto Bruno, but we don't Ooh. talk about Bruno. Ooh. I love Encanto Bruno. Alex would be Loving it. I know. And then uh, Glenn Ledgerwood thinks the only form we can sure about is reliable is a dream to shares. Said it's for, it's for me was very visually impressive though. Um, yeah. And that's who, who's come out top of the pollets for me. Um, there was a video, wasn't there, of his, his point to point win that went, went went sort of all over the socials before his bumper win. It, it was very, very impressive how he won that point to point considering he looked like he was going to finish dead last and he just suddenly just ran past everything, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, Rock My World has come out and won since at Cheltenham, and that was mm -hmm. in that point to point. So, some good wins in that. yeah. Uh, any any final comments from you guys on this race at all? No, I'll, I'll just say that it's for me was one of my five horses to follow. Uh, I, I put up in September, but I wasn't brave enough like some of the other guys, the um, the finishing line guys that, that put him up as, a, as an anti post pick. I, I can't. I wasn't that brave yet, but um, so I can't take credit for that. But uh, I'm very pleased he's come out and, and done well, and I'm, I'm on quite a nice price. So uh, let's just hope he, he does it. Brilliant. Right, that wraps up uh, day two then of the Cheltenham Festival Twitter polls. Um, please go and get involved on our social media, on our Twitter page, at Cheltenham underscore X. Come and give us your views, give us your votes. Make sure you also subscribe and like in the comments as well. Give us a comment who your uh, who your your, your favourite horse is or your nap of the festival. Or just just let us know what you think. Um, finally, just want to say once again thanks to um, Lloyd from Hacked Up Racing. And once again, you can get discount on his website. We use the code Exchange twenty five for twenty five percent off. And final thanks is to John and Ian for joining me this evening. Thanks, guys. Thank you, and, Alan. Uh, thanks Thank to those you. watching as well. We'll see you in the next one.